Hello everyone. This is Pratima and welcome back to experimental practical series. Till now we have covered all the properties of cardiac muscle and today we shall study nervous regulation of frog's heart. In this video first we will discuss the nerve supply of frog's heart and how it differs from that of human heart. Then how to dissect for the vagus nerve, experimental setup for the practical, how to record the graph and finally we shall discuss the important questions on this topic. So let's begin with the nerve supply of the heart. Heart is innervated by both sympathetic as well as parasympathetic nerves. Sympathetic preganglionic fibers originate from upper thoracic segments of the spinal cord and synapse in the superior, middle and inferior cervical ganglia. The postganglionic sympathetic fibers from these ganglia then innervate the various parts of the heart including SA node, AV node, atria and ventricles. Shown in violet color in this picture are the sympathetic fibers. These fibers release norepinephrine which increases heart rate, excitability, conductivity and the force of contraction. In contrast, preganglionic parasympathetic fibers emerge from the medulla as vagus nerve. These fibers terminate in the parasympathetic ganglia near the cardiac muscles. The postganglionic parasympathetic fibers arising from these ganglia innervate SA node, AV node and atria and a very small portion of the ventricular muscles. They release acetylcholine which exerts inhibitory effects on the heart. So in this picture parasympathetic fibers are shown in red color. In case of frog's heart there are two parasympathetic ganglia. Remax ganglion which is located at the junction of sinus venosus and atria and Beder's ganglion located at atrioventricular junction. Another specialty in frog is postganglionic sympathetic fibers travel alongside the vagus nerve. Thus, the vagus nerve contains about 20 to 25 percent of the sympathetic fibers. Hence, it is referred as vagosympathetic trunk. With this background knowledge, let's see the setup for this experiment. But before that, kindly read the disclaimer. To obtain the effects of vagal stimulation, it is necessary to deliver multiple stimuli. Hence, Nipsamer is taken into the primary circuit and of course EMTM as well to note the point of stimulation. Rest of the circuit is as usual. Now let's see how to dissect the vagus. We have already seen dissection of the frog's heart. If you have missed the video, link is provided in the description box below for your reference. Once the heart is dissected, stretch the upper limb laterally to expose the deeply situated triangular shining tendon of the levator scapulae muscle. So you can note the tendon here. Petrohyoid muscle runs perpendicular to the broader aspect of this tendon. A complex of carotid artery, laryngeal nerve and the vagus nerve runs along the inferior aspect of this petrohyoid muscle. Vagus is positioned inferiorly to the artery. So you can note here the artery and the nerve. To locate the vagus nerve, gently we rotate the petrohyoid muscle upwards and insert a pointed glass rod carefully between the vagus and the carotid artery and push it forwards to take the vagus nerve on the glass rod. If the muscle tissue is attached to the nerve, we have to carefully remove it. This ensures that only the vagus nerve is on the rod and it allows targeted stimulation of the vagus nerve without affecting the surrounding structures. The same procedure is repeated on the other side to dissect both right as well as left vagus. Before proceeding, we have to confirm that both the vagus nerves are correctly dissected and the current strength is also adequate for obtaining the response. To test the current strength, we usually stimulate the exposed abdominal muscles of the frog. A mild contraction as you can note here indicates the current is sufficient. Next we stimulate the vagus nerve and observe the cardiac activity and as you can note heart stops momentarily 
in response to vagus stimulation. This response is also confirmed from the other vagus. So after this confirmation, the preparation is mounted on the board, heart is attached to the lever and its position is adjusted and a normal cardiogram is recorded on a slow moving drum. After recording the cardiogram for sufficient duration, right vagus is stimulated and the stimulation is stopped immediately once the heart stops beating. This is confirmed by the straight line on the cardiogram. Within few seconds, heart begins to contract and as you can observe, the initial contractions are weaker and their force of contraction gradually increases. Once the maximum force is reached, left vagus is stimulated. Again the heart stops momentarily and then gradually resumes its force of contraction. Now the strength of the current is increased slightly and the crescent is stimulated. Once again heart stops and then gradually recovers. This completes the recording part. Now let us first label the record. Here is the normal cardiogram. As evident by the EMTM tracing, this is the effect of right vagus stimulation. Here is the effect of left vagus stimulation and finally the crescent stimulation. By now you must have noted that when the vagus or crescent is stimulated, heart stops for some time and then gradually recovers from it. That means vagus or parasympathetic innervation has inhibitory effect on the heart. At this point you can stop the video and try to answer the questions. First, why does vagus exert inhibitory effects on the heart? On vagal stimulation, in which phase of the cardiac cycle heart stops and why? And why the recovery of the heart is gradual? This is sometimes also referred as staircase phenomenon. Okay, you might have figured it out that inhibitory effect of the vagus is because of release of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine binds with muscarinic receptors to be specific M2 receptors on the cardiac muscle. As a result, potassium channels open and there is increased membrane permeability for potassium ions leading to potassium efflux. As there is loss of positive charges from the muscle there is development of hyperpolarization and heart stops in diastole. Now coming to the third question, why the recovery is gradual or why do you get staircase phenomenon during the recovery phase? During vagal stimulation, acetylcholine is released. It is gradually hydrolyzed by the enzyme choline esterase and removed from the tissue. This causes gradual recovery giving rise to staircase appearance. Once the acetylcholine is completely removed, heart regains its original force of contraction. Ok, now once again you can pause the video and try to answer what is the difference between stimulation of right and the left vagus and what are the differences between vagal and crescent stimulation. Once you get the answers, resume back. Let's see the differences between the stimulation of right and left vagus. In human heart, right vagus stimulation mainly decreases heart rate because it innervates SA node. In contrast, stimulation of left vagus mainly decreases the rate of impulse conduction through the AV node as the left vagus innervates AV node. Both the vagi innervate atrial muscles and hence they also decrease atrial force of contraction but this effect is not appreciable. As the ventricular muscles are very sparsely innervated by the vagi, there is no effect on the ventricular force of contraction. In frog's heart, there is no difference in the effect due to right or left vagus stimulation. Both cause stoppage of heart in diastole followed by gradual recovery. Coming to the last question, 
difference between vagal and crescent stimulation in frog when we stimulate vagus we stimulate preganglionic parasympathetic fibers as well as postganglionic sympathetic fibers while during crescent stimulation we stimulate only the postganglionic parasympathetic fibers another difference is crescent stimulation requires higher strength of the stimulus than that is required for vagal stimulation this is because remax ganglion is situated deep within the crescent let's wind up this topic by summarizing the important points frog's heart is innervated by sympathetic as well as parasympathetic nerves in the form of vago sympathetic trunk parasympathetic ganglia are remax ganglia in the crescent and beders ganglia at the atrioventricular junction stimulation of vagus as well as crescent causes stoppage of heart in diastole followed by gradual recovery this is due to increased permeability for potassium ions due to action of acetylcholine on m2 receptors gradual recovery of the cardiac tissue is because of gradual hydrolysis of acetylcholine by the enzyme choline esterase that's all for today thank you for joining in and see you in the next video have you not yet subscribed to my channel then go ahead and click the subscribe button and press the bell icon to stay updated about the new releases if you like the video give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends thank you for watching and see you in the next video